For more than 40 years, OLPH's Sharing Parishes Ministry has been the center of our response to a community in need for food, shelter, and support. Today, through this Sharing Parishes program, we touch the lives of more than 7,000 people every month. It actually began in 1971 when Father McDonald came from one of our sharing parishes, St. James on Wabash Avenue, and he began inspiring us to be aware of the poor. Um, the message of the gospel is to love one another as I have loved you. What you do to the least of my people, you do to me. And that really is the message. The program started here at St. James at 29th and Wabash, a few blocks north of the IIT campus. St. James might best be known for the controversial decision to demolish the old church. Fact is, for the parishioners, the heart of the church is no longer in that building, but here in their pantry and social services center. Well, this is St. James Food Pantry. It's part of the social service component in St. James Parish. So we are under the social care department. There are two umbrellas, the food pantry and senior ministry. What the food pantry does is just helps to serve over 1,500 clients each month in various ways in, in needs of food and a, a little beyond. We have generous donors, some of it from our sharing parishes, such as OLPH. OLPH comes every week on Tuesday, Sarah comes and brings us bread, vegetables, and things that will help out for the senior program. I pick up the food after 6.30 Mass and have the help of both Ed Krupa and Bill Tome help, and then drive down, and then I come and I have help here, usually at this end, unloading my car. And then as needed, if, they, if they're shorthanded, but they have so many different groups that come and help them, that I help unload, and then I leave. So it doesn't take that long. And it's, it's just a matter of getting food from point A to point B. That was just the person that well, we distribute the, bags by family size. That's, that's so exactly. families of one, two, and three will get at least two bags of groceries. All the groceries are made by the food pyramid, so that it's made in mine, and they have love put into each bag. Definitely the demand has gotten higher. Uh, there are probably a lot of reasons. Economy is one. The way the, the area is changing another. So we do see an increase in population. And we also see a change in who comes to the food pantry. So people who've had jobs all their lives, they come to the food pantry, either because the check is not keeping up with the times or somebody in the family might have lost their job. You know, this place is legendary. The amount of food that comes across this counter is absolutely staggering. And I'm starting to really get a sense of what that statement actually means because you see we have all of these bags, you know, a good number of these bags will be gone by the by the end of distribution today at 11. So. We couldn't do this without our sharing parishes. They're responsible, I would think, for at least 30% of the food that they bring in on site. And so we couldn't be able to keep up with the demand. Um, and so that is very critical. About 30 blocks farther south, you will find St. Philip Neary at 72nd and Merrill. This apparent well-groomed neighborhood masked the poverty and stress inside this community. This community was uh, founded in 1912, uh, predominantly Irish Catholics, American, uh, here in the South Shore. The South Shore of Chicago was uh, consisting of uh, Jewish and Irish. And so then after the uh, 60s, uh, the racial tension and riots, uh, the white flight occurred. But the Catholic Church remained predominantly within the city of Chicago, where other denominations also fled. The community now in the South Shore has faced uh, economic downturn as many of our communities have with the economy the way it is, not only in the city, but throughout the nation. And then that's where our food pantry comes in. We service over 2,000 a month here, and St. Columbanus and other Catholic churches who have food pantries also see that number or higher. I think we're having great success with this pantry. We really are. You know, we do a lot of work down here. Uh, we try to help these people. A lot of donations come in. Our Lady of Perpetual Help. It's help we got. We get a lot of food from there. It's so grateful for that. We really do need it. Because we fall on hard times here ourselves sometimes, even from the depository. Because there's so many people coming in, we have to have so much food, you know. But everybody's falling on hard luck around here, you know. They need food, they need jobs, you know. So we try to help the best we can as far as the food is concerned. On the city's near west side, Our Lady of Tepeyac serves a largely Hispanic community. Their food pantry provides for a growing population of hungry and poor. 
They recently became associated with the Greater Chicago Food Depository, which will help them maintain a consistent inventory at low cost. Many people arrive here three to four hours before the pantry opens to secure their place in line. We're serving now anywhere from 124 to 139 people every Friday. The numbers have really climbed. Every couple of months you'll talk to me and the numbers have climbed. So they know that things run out between a half hour and 40 minutes after pantry starts. So they know to get here early. Before we got into the Greater Chicago Food Depository a year ago, February, we were relying solely on food from OLPH. We would have really been up a creek if we didn't get that food every week. So it's really a blessing. It is so important and we are so grateful. Our average age here at the parish is 25. And so we have a lot of young families who have a lot of children who come to us. In the past, I would stress out about the number of volunteers. I think, gee, we don't have enough volunteers or, you know, are we gonna have enough money? What if I don't get this grant? Do we don't really have enough money now? But you know what? I really honestly in my heart feel that the good Lord wants us to do this. And it's gonna happen. Things have just fallen in my lap. I've gotten the money, I've gotten the resources, I've gotten the volunteers, and it's worked. The need, as the economic conditions become worse, the need becomes greater. And as the state of Illinois has less money, it is up to the churches to respond to the needs of people wherever they are, and it is growing. Arguably the most challenged community we serve might be the Inglewood and Auburn Grisham neighborhoods of Chicago. St. Sabina's off 79th Street has been a part of the Sharing Parish program since its pastor, Father Mike Flager, started his career serving OLPH as a deacon. Through his leadership, St. Sabina has become a safe haven in a struggling, often destructive section of the city. We try to be a full service here. The Employment Center, the Social Service Center, we're still running a school with 300 students. Um, we run a two foster homes, we run a, a senior building, and we run a apartment building of 12 apartments for low income and a Samaritan program for homeless. Auburn Gresham is probably about 98% African American. Most of our people are at the poverty level or below the poverty level. Our church is, has always been, or for many, many, many years, been at the helm of activity in this community. Our church is kind of that focal point, that central place that everybody just kind of knows. Sadly, the thing about it is a lot of times with poverty comes all the other things, comes the crime, you know, comes kind of the neglect of the houses and that kind of thing. So we're here to address that. Our main focus here at St. Sabina Catholic Charities is to begin to break down some of those barriers for our people. The problem is that resources are not there. And if we, frankly, do not get the help from the Sharing Parish or have other folks outside that help us among our outreach programs, not our, not our payroll, not our budget, not our church operations, but our outreach literally depends on life support and how much we get help from the outside. But I think the thing that we're probably best at is bringing people hope letting folks know that there's somebody out there who cares, that it matters, that the love of God, really trying to demonstrate the love of God, being doers okay. of the word. And one of the things that I can say about you guys there at OLPH is that you have been so wonderful to us to help us to begin to, or help us to be able to continue that program. A lot of pantries right now are closing because they cannot continue to afford to to provide that service. But I mean, OLPH has consistently been there to support us. I'm hoping, I always hope that we can do some more connecting of people from St. Sabina's and OLPH to bring people together to deal with the faith and the, and the heart issues. So we not only have a giving of resources, but a sharing of hearts so that people in the OLPH community can get to know more of the people here, that the children in the school there can get more of the children here and we can re realize the gift we have to give each other and the sharing of each other's lives and stories and testimonies and build relationships. We should be proud. We have made a great impact in those sharing parishes, in the food pantries, the soup kitchens that we provide for. Uh, we should be proud of that. And is there more to do? There will always be more to do because Christ told us we will always have the poor with us.
but we can make a great impact on what we do with the poor. We love you. Our Lady of Perpetual Health. Thank you so much. As you can see, without you, we couldn't do it. Do you want some fruit and vegetables? Uh-uh, no.